it's time for sports and we'll come back with all the stories. The Diana Stars uh, yesterday playing against the ASVETA club in the Confederation Cup. Also, we have some international stories for you. Don't go away. We are back uh, with more after this break. All right, so you all come back to the sports segment here on the AM Show. Well, yesterday, Diana Stars uh, were in action against AS Vita Club of uh, DR Congo at the Doma Park. It was a CAF Confederation Cup game. Diana going into that game had lost their first game and then uh, drew their last game, which was their second, and needed to win this game uh, to keep their hopes of making the next stage of the competition alive. Well, exactly so, their new coach, Kenichi Asuashi, uh, inspired the side as they defeated Vita Club by two goals to one. We don't have highlights of the game, but we have reactions uh, from Kenichi Yatsuashi himself, and he has praised the players for that amazing win. It was extremely, extremely difficult match because we have strong opponents to play against. I respect uh, our opponents a lot, but uh, I have to give a, a, a big credit to our players for winning this match. What I did was, I already know this team has good players, so we put them together, that's one. But uh, uh, even with the best tactical plan, it wouldn't work if our players had not worked that hard. So big credit to our players. Uh, playing on the west surface was difficult for both sides, both for us and for them. Uh, but I think it was dry enough to play, so I think it was even round. All right, so Indiana Stars won that game by two goals when, by virtue of that result, uh, they are uh, third on the table with four points. Remember, uh, they picked up a point, uh, they drew their first game and winning this one, four points there. They are, uh, in terms of points, uh, they have same points with the team they defeated. That's AS Vita Club also with four points. So AS Vita Club are second, and then uh, with that, Casablanca uh, of Morocco are uh, leading the pack uh, with uh, five points. They yesterday defeated Asseg Nemosa, so Asseg Nemosa are down uh, in the, uh, on the table with just a point. So Indiana Stars still have a chance to make the next stage of the competition. All they have to do is to win their remaining two games or even uh, at least a draw and a win. We'll see them uh, top that group and make the next stage of the competition. We pray that uh, they will be able to do so. So we we'll definitely will bring you more reactions uh, from that game and our subsequent sports bulletins. Make sure you join us at 2 uh, on Sports Today with Nathaniel Atto. What well, we still have to see here on the local scene because uh, on next month, one big tournament is happening. What well, we just witnessed the FIFA uh, World Cup in Russia where we saw amazing games and we anticipate the same. That this year's FIFA Under 20 Women's World Cup, which will be hosted in France. Well, the Black Princesses are in the same group as Ghana, in the same group with the host nation France, New Zealand, as well as the Netherlands. Well, yesterday we've been monitoring our shows here. We went to Pram Pram and spoke to their coach, uh, Yusif Basigi, as well as two, uh, three of their players, Sandra Ousu and some phenomenal, sensational players. And then uh, and the Sina Abambila, uh, who plays uh, club football in Germany, as well as their captain, Rafia uh, Kucheri. Well, their coach, uh, Yusif Basigi, has been speaking about their target going into the competition. Most especially now that the men have won, it's going to be a, a, a motivational factor for them. But for us, we also accept the challenge and then we'll, we'll put everything at the back of our mind, knowing very well that we are playing the host nation. Um, we also do our very best to uh, get good uh, results out of it. I'm sure every day you speak to these girls about uh, our preparations, about what we are going to do in France. What's the uh, target you set for yourself and the girls going into the tournament? Because you know we are used to always participating but not getting to where we've always wanted to be. Yeah, um, we also know that Ghanaians, you know, we are result oriented yeah. and um, we know the, 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 the tax actually. So the first and foremost target is to cross the group stage because princesses, for instance, have never gone beyond the group stage. And um, this time around, we are highly determined to cross the group stage, after which we settle down and then we re-strategize to see the way forward so far as the subsequent matches are concerned. All right, so that was coach uh, of the uh, Black uh, Princesses team, you see Vasigi. They are expected to leave town uh, on Friday for a training tour of Spain before uh, leaving for the uh, tournament, which will be hosted 
in France on August 5. It starts on August 5 in Ghana. We'll play the first game uh, with the host dish in France. Well, so from one national team, move to another national team, same level. This was the, fe uh, the female under 20 team. Now to the female, uh, to the male uh, team, that's the under 20 team, that's the Black Satellite. They're also preparing uh, for the uh, qualifier, that's the African Youth Championship qualifier uh, against Benin. That game uh, will be played on August 4 here in Ghana. And if you remember very well, the last time we attempted to uh, qualify for the African Youth Championship, uh, it didn't go quite well. That time was uh, the time of coach. Uh, coach, that's uh, Didi Dramani. Yes, it was Didi Dramani who was in charge of the team. Well, there's a new manager in charge of the team, that's Jimmy Kobla. He's uh, actually not looking at the pressure uh, created by that team that couldn't make it to the, next, uh, the last African Youth Championship qualifier. He believes that he has a very formidable team uh, to make the qualification. This job always goes with pressure. Even if that group has qualified, there'll be pressure on you to also qualify. They've not qualified. There should be pressure on you to qualify. It goes with pressure. We are used to it. We'll take care of that. Okay. You are going into the game against Benin. How well do you know the side? And have you been doing any monitoring at all on this team? Yeah, yeah, we are on it. We believe by the time we'll be ready for our, our real tactical play, we'll tell the boys what to do and they will deliver. You know, I'm coming from Togo. Yeah. So I was close to them. And uh, I have my people there, and so don't worry, shall be well. Well, today is a big day. It is a big day because a legend was born on this day 60 years ago. Professor Azuma Nelson is 60 years today, and we're going to celebrate him. So we dedicate today's program uh, to the Professor Azuma Zunzum Nelson. There will be more on him uh, at uh, 2 when he joins us. Nathan Lato will be here tell you more about the professor Azuma Nelson. A special program will be held on Saturday to honor him. Uh, you know what uh, he's done for us in terms of our boxing here in this country and what he's still doing for us uh, in the boxing sport. So uh, we wish him a happy birthday. So if you celebrate your birthday today, you're celebrating the day with a legend, a legend uh, here in Ghana. That's uh, Professor Azuma Nelson. Well, we have to move on and talk some summer transfer. Now, we both uh, clubs are preparing for the start of their respective leagues. And Liverpool yesterday agreed a deal to sign uh, Roma goalkeeper Alisson. The uh, money is £67 million. Pounds, and that makes him the uh, most expensive goalkeeper. That's after his own uh, colleague at national team. That's uh, Ederson, who uh, left uh, his club side last season. For Manchester City. So most expensive goalkeeper for Liverpool, that's uh, Alisson. He's expected uh, to complete his medical today and then sign the contract. And obviously, if you're a Liverpool fan, you'll be excited about this move because, uh, yes, for, for a very long time, they, they've been craving and they've been wanting a top-class goalkeeper. Karius caused them at the uh, last uh, UEFA Champions League final, uh, losing that game to Real Madrid by three goals to one, and he gifted two goals. And even after that, still making mistakes in their preseason. So if you're a Liverpool fan, you'll be excited about this move. I think that is a good move for Liverpool, uh, because you need a top goalkeeper uh, if you want to win medals. And winning medals, obviously, they would want to win the uh, English Premier League, want to win the UEFA Champ or participate well in the UEFA Champions League, and win other domestic trophies. So Alisson has come in. They've also signed uh, some few good players as well. So it's set up for a very nice season uh, for Liverpool. But once the story is still uh, coming from Liverpool is that Oxley Chamberlain, who picked up an injury in the uh, UEFA Champions League game against Roma last season, uh, will not be available to play in this season's uh, Premier League. Such a heartbreaking story uh, that uh, the man will not be available. Still nursing that knee injury after going through the surgery. It doesn't look like he will be fit. Yesterday, the, his manager, Jurgen Klopp, confirmed that it doesn't look like he will be fit uh, to play a part in Liverpool's campaign uh, next season. We'll see how that will go and also we'll bring you more in terms of transfer news at two on Sports Today with Nathan Lato. I'm Benedict Ousu. Thanks so much for your company. A big shout out to the Frenchman. Uh, he's a driver here uh, in uh, this house. Uh, thanks so much uh, to him. He's been doing amazing uh, things for us. Well, uh, we will see you at two when you join us uh, on Sports Today. Have a wonderful day.